let's face it, it's been quite the week for Warcraft's golden girl with the bright red eyes. Not only has Sylvanas been pinned down by Alun's wrath personified, but she's finally realised what everyone else could see a mile off. You'll always come off second best in a partnership with a Jailer. Still, given the level of opposition she's come up against, it's also amazing and drearily inevitable that she has survived both encounters. There have been indications for some time now that the fate of the latest crossover villain from a previous expansion was unlikely to go the way of the Gul'dans and Garrishes of times past. The interactions between Sylvie and Anduin before he went full Derp Knight were reminiscent of Luke and Vader in Return of the Jedi, a lot of, I know you have good in you, Sylvanas. It is too late for me, Anduin. The problem with this, of course, is that this particular former Warchief has racked up such enmity in the Warcraft world that if she were to survive Shadowlands, there would literally be no friendly place for her to go. Anyway. Let's recap the last couple of cinematics briefly. Duranda, the Night Warrior, the vengeance of Alun, immensely powerful, furious vengeance, has been pursuing Sylvie since the infamous Teldrassil barbecue accident. Having caught up with her prey and with a target at her mercy, she suddenly and inexplicably loses all of her powers. Alun has forgotten to switch out the batteries in her representative on Azeroth. This, of course, has historically happened to all Night Warriors in the lore whenever they are about to strike down their nemesis. No, no, that was a lie. Bad move. This is what historically happens when you've written yourself into a corner and need a quick and unconvincing out. Pretty much every Night Warrior preceding Tyrande has been overwhelmed and destroyed by Elune's power, so it makes little sense that this time out she's forgotten to pay the bill and been cut off. Such a betrayal of Tyrande by her goddess could make for some wonderful character development as she questions the fidelity and nature of her chosen deity, but watch Blizzard do absolutely nothing with that thread. I would be very pleased to be proven wrong. So, phew, having started the Night Warrior story from early battle for Azeroth to now, it was quite the satisfying payoff to see Tyrande whimper pleadingly to a halt and fail miserably. That's five star writing right there folks. But such things are bound to happen when there's only one Sylvie to go around, and there are so many people wanting to kill her. So go to the back of the queue, Tyrande, and think about what you've done, young lady. Or not done in this case. Sylvanas' second stare down was of course her conversion away from the Jailer's cause. I'm not the first to point out the obvious flaw in the line, I will never serve. Given the enthusiastic Jailer serving that she actually has been doing all of this time consciously and unconsciously, ever since her first death. Apparently, serving someone for all that time doesn't count if you fire an arrow at their metallic head and say you'll never do it. The Jailer's response to this treachery also didn't make a lot of sense either. What's to prevent him from putting a dog collar on her and anduinizing her? Or chaining her along with the others? Not only does he just shrug, he decides that she's been such a good little minion that she deserves a parting gift. Can you imagine Arthur's doing the same? Or Deathwing? Or Bobby Kotick? Of course they wouldn't. They'd obliterate her where she stood as a warning to all the others, or pat her head and give her some blizzard balance. It's hard to imagine Deathwing rubbaging around in his cupboard to give Sylvanas a reward for such an open display of disloyalty. And her reward, of course, is the out that Blizzard have been straining to give Sylvie so they don't have to sacrifice her. Oh look everyone, she's just not been herself ever since Frostmourne hoovered all the goodness out of her, but the ever benevolent Jailer has bestowed a gracious restoration upon her and everything is fine now. I can see her going for a novel form of insanity plea at her upcoming trial. After all, that's why the Jailer released Bolvar, Thrall and Jaina, right? Diminished responsibility, cause me soul was missing, governor. I didn't know what I was doing, like. At least I hope the security is better than Garrosh's was. Despite this soul-restored gambit that Blizzard have played, it's not as if their story team are out of the woods yet. Simply too many people want Sylvie dead, you see. That problem hasn't just suddenly evaporated. Not many Night Elves are likely to forgive her in light of these events. The rest of the Alliance aren't overly fond of her either, given her track record and recent expansions. Lordaeron is presumably still blighted and unusable, and Teldrassil's charred remains still loom over the Darkshore coast. I seriously doubt Bane Bloodhoof has been sending her Christmas cards. 
and the whole Horde leadership, in fact, have little reason to want her alive given the death and destruction she has caused. Garrosh, at least, had honour. Sylvie doesn't even have that on her side. And, of course, there are always plenty out there keen to avenge Saurfang. This means that after Sylvie is acquitted of genocide, war crimes, and all of the other appalling acts she's committed, on the basis that she only had half a soul and therefore wasn't responsible for any of her actions, where is she likely to go? It's all very well having tea and buttered scones with Jaina post-trial, jovial and blue-eyed as you would be, but what possible role could she play in the future? Who would have her? Is she just going to shack up with Nathanus and Eastern Plaguelands, fix the house up a bit, feed the hounds and start a rehabilitation centre for Repentant Scourge? Would she always be looking over her shoulder given the conga line of devastation she's left in her wake? How many night elf rogues is she going to encounter every night? Will she be able to sleep with Gen prowling around outside scratching the walls and dicking up her flower beds? And Tyrande's turn in the queue will come around again and she's unlikely to just want a hug. All the Blizzard have really done, by attempting to redeem Sylvanas like this, is to veer into yet another corner, just as tight as the last one was. They have to accept that this character, beloved and reviled, has to die. It's justice for the many at the expense of the deluded few. There's no going back to the old Sylvanas, the one that I actually liked despite her factional allegiance. The calculating, self-serving, looking only out for the forsaken Sylvanas. The marriage of convenience, Sylvanas. The cool, efficient and quietly menacing Sylvanas. The moving lament of the highborn Sylvanas. She's gone, and it's time that her modern day counterpart, redeemed or otherwise, joins her. Thank you for um, letting me drone on today, and for listening. Um, as a postscript, there have been a number of actual death threats against um, Blizzard employees as a result of this development in Sylvanas' story. Now, you know, while I do care about the lore, and I'm sure that you do too when it comes to World of Warcraft, um, there's never ever any reason to take it that far, so I think we're all quite safe in condemning that kind of behaviour. In any case, I will be back on relatively soon with more nonsense, but until then, I am the Conspicuous Moo, and may the blessings of the Sindorai be upon you.